Hello, this is Sarah Connolly for the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. And I'm so excited for our session today to welcome a former client, Ben, who is 45. He owns his own dentist practice with some business partners. He is a father of three children, all under the age of nine. And Ben is now how many days alcohol free? 133. 133 days. Now, when Ben joined us, he was convinced that he could not quit. Um, he'd tried, he tells me about 100 times, but I think that might be a slight exaggeration, but he tried many, many times with different methods. Um, and he just convinced himself that he wasn't going to be able to do it. But he came to us with a decision to give it another go for the sake of his kids, his marriage, his career, and his mental health. And so I'm so grateful that he's giving us his time today. And um, welcome, Ben. It's wonderful to have you. Thanks for having me, Sarah. So Ben, you're based in Maine, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Midcoast Maine, yep. Great. And you're, you're juggling life with these young babies and married and businesses. There's a lot going on. Can you tell me a bit about what was happening just in the lead up to making the decision that you were going to have another try at giving up alcohol? Sure. I was leading a busy life, as you said. Um, career was going well. Uh, fatherhood was going well. My marriage was going well. As, but I could see that I was having uh, an issue with alcohol and that it was slowly getting out of control. I was starting to um, do things that I had never done before, like hide alcohol. And it wasn't really a problem in my marriage. My wife didn't have any issues with me. I was able to get everything done, but I, I could feel it inside that I was losing control and I was embarrassed by it and I was starting to lie to people about it and that was that was the lead up and that had taken some years to ramp up and I I could see it coming and and it it looked dark in the future so I found you guys yeah, right. So it was looking pretty dark, the future at the time. What was your mental health like, would you say? <clears throat> I had I had a lot of anxiety um, that I tried to overcome with a lot of exercise. Uh, I tried to be as disciplined as I could be, but alcohol did not fall into that uh, discipline category it that kept escaping me I was able to do a lot of things through what I called uh, discipline trying to uh, maintain that balance but alcohol did not uh, abide by those rules of discipline that I was trying to keep my life in balance so yeah it, it was just something separate and so I could I could see that it this was something beyond discipline, beyond my just grit and effort. Yeah, got it. So in other areas of your life, you could take control, you were disciplined, you could set goals, you could achieve goals, but this was kind of the one thing that just kept eluding you. Would that be fair to say? That's exactly it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I totally relate to that personally, and I know a lot of people that I've met on, along the way have that same thing. It's very frustrating mm -hmm. to know yourself as somebody that has tenacity and determination and grit and all those things you talk about, but it's this one thing. Yeah. So, Ben, you were convinced that you couldn't quit. 
what changed and how did it change? I'd been contemplating the idea for a while of needing some assistance with quitting. I kept going back and forth with that. No, I've got this. I've got the determination. I can do this. I've done other really hard things. And I just need to keep trying harder. And that had been going through uh, my mind for, like I say, uh, probably the past five years, really in earnest. And um, it, it just been a cycle. Sometimes, you know, I'd spend, you know, a month um, not drinking, uh, tried to do a 90 day stretch. I made it about 60 days. Um, but I just uh, I just kept coming back to the same cycle. And after so many times of, of the cycle just turning and turning and turning, I I figured, you know, I need some assistance. But it was really something I wanted to avoid. I really wanted to solve this uh, issue on my own. I, I didn't want to turn to to help and I didn't know what help looked like. I didn't know what was out there. All I know, all I knew was that I didn't want anybody to to know, and um, I just wanted the problem solved. Yeah. So you had a problem. You tried to fix it a number of different ways, and then you changed your strategy and you did something that you really perhaps didn't want to do, but felt like this is this is something that I really need to do. Yeah, that's that's correct. Um, before, you know, all I really knew with alcohol, um, people that that had trouble stopping drinking, I should say, uh, I knew about AA, I knew about inpatient services, um, but I just didn't feel like that was something I needed. I just didn't feel like that was me. I just couldn't believe that I was getting to that point. Everything else in life was great. I have a great family. I had a great upbringing. Um, my, my parents were really good. Uh, they had a, what I think of as a healthy relationship with alcohol. They drank some, but not to excess. But I started early and uh, I was a little different from the other people in my family. I just didn't want it to to touch my career mm -hmm. and I didn't want it to touch my relationship with my children and I didn't want to make a big deal about it I wanted to be private about it so I didn't know where to turn to so um I didn't I don't know if you'll ask about this or not but I started searching for alternatives to you know AA or some type of inpatient because that just didn't it just didn't seem like it was a possibility I just didn't want to do that I don't know what would have happened but I just didn't want to do that so um, I just started started searching podcasts about mm -hmm. uh, drinking I thought well maybe at least I'll just start listening to some podcasts and and you know maybe that'll help so and then I heard your lovely voice uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, oh my goodness. Yeah. And uh, what was uh, different about it was that you were talking about the neurophysiology of, of alcohol. And um, that, that really struck me. I was like, this is, this is cool because mm -hmm. I, I used to smoke a long time ago. Um, and I learned when in, in college, I learned exactly what cigarette smoke does to your lungs. Yeah. And I still remember some phrases I won't go over, but I remember the, the permanent damage it's doing. I was could think of the cilia, the lining of your lungs, and I could think of what's going on there. And, and that, that got me to quit right away. So learning about alcohol and, and the way that you were talking about it on a podcast was, uh, that's what um, got me interested. Got it. Yeah. I think that's so important for people to um, 
be conscious as well of is that it's not just about this willpower thing that you know I think when we're trying to quit in the early days we think we're somehow flawed because we can't do it with willpower because but we don't understand really what's happening and when we get that understanding it almost creates a little bit of space and gets a that inner critic voice that keeps us going back you should be able to stop what's wrong with you just creates a little bit of space there for us to go "Mm, maybe it's not just about that Mm -hmm. and i didn't understand that i thought i was just not trying hard enough right right yeah And I've actually got goosebumps as you say that, because I believe there are so many people out there that are still stuck in that mindset of I'm I'm, there's something wrong with me. I'm not trying hard enough. Oh Uh, yeah. I I can't believe how much I've learned in the last 133 days. It's been the most positive experience I've had in a long time. Um, So I'm just ever grateful for it. And I know we'll get into it more, but um, yeah, I, I just so lucky that I found it. And I'm not just saying that because uh, I'm on here, but I'm glad I searched. Um, I'm not big on social media. I didn't find alcohol free lifestyle through social media, just through the podcast. And I just started listening to the podcast. I'd go out on my lunch break. I was like, oh, this one's good. I tried a few of them and they weren't that good. Some of them were about guys with addiction and, you know, oh, I used to do meth and, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, this doesn't uh, apply to me. You know, Mm -hmm. that's, I felt like I had my life together except for this one thing. And when I started listening to your podcasts, um, coach Sarah and and you or uh, and coach Victoria excuse me I just couldn't wait to download them and get out on my lunch break walk and that started the kind of the slow turn the slow positivity turn hey there's more to learn about here there's something going on here maybe just take a, a pause on blaming myself for just a second just see where this goes and that's what that's what got me <laughs> luckily luckily yeah I love that you just said that because I think if I was going to condense this podcast into one message it would be give yourself a pause stop blaming yourself and see if you might learn something different that takes away that blame and shame yeah Yeah. beautiful thank you for saying that Ben so let's get into that um what did you find that was most empowering and bearing in mind that probably there are people listening who are either contemplating you know quitting alcohol or maybe are early on in the day in their days what could you share with them that made the most impact for you one thing for a long time now I've felt that I wasn't really living exactly the type of life that I wanted to be living or that I could be living. And I didn't really know why for a long time, but my weekends wouldn't come. I would start drinking. I would have, you know, wake up feeling rough, a little foggy. I'd start the week off with anxiety. And it was that cycle but I thought that's what that was life. But down deep, I thought that there was more to it and that I had a depth of life that I just wasn't grasping. And I didn't attribute it to alcohol at first, but then that was that, and I love this term, that cognitive dissonance that I started to identify life was life is great. It's always been, excuse me. It's always been great, but I was really struggling. And then I figured out that why I was struggling and I was blaming myself and I wasn't being true to myself. And I was lying to myself and all these 
qualities that just weren't me. So that's one thing that um, that's that's the biggest thing here was was learning that it's <laughs> I knew that I needed to stop blaming myself and stop thinking about it in one sided way of I just needed to try harder or I needed more discipline. I, I had tr tried thinking about this problem for years like that. And I kept coming up with the same result. So I was really happy to find this podcast because I, it was a new way of thinking about it. I wanted to own an, the issue, but at the same time, I needed to change the way I was thinking that um, it wasn't my fault. And I needed to um, learn how to uh, change the way I think about it as a problem, if that makes any sense. Oh, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Because, you know, when we think about our flaws and where we're deficient and where we're doing everything wrong, as we talk about, often it's this, well, what does that create? That creates stress and anxiety. And when we're stressed and anxious, what we want to do is do the one thing that makes us feel bad in the first place. <laughs> it's kind of uh, this horrific, vicious cycle that I got caught in. You've been caught in millions of people. So you gained this awareness that, wow, maybe it's not just that I'm deficient um, or flawed or not trying hard enough. Where did you go from there, having that realization? Yeah, so I also, well, let me say, I also had some of the same thoughts that I'm sure a lot of people have that it's normal, so many people do it. Um, and then also if I, if I stop drinking alcohol, what will people say, what will they think? And these were uh, worries of mine. Um, am I a failure for, you know, and all these, these different types of things. But really what I'd come to realize was that alcohol was giving me so much anxiety um, day to day, week to week that I really craved that life free of that anxiety. And at first, I was worried about what people would think and going to functions and um, but I had come to find out that luckily, uh, those fears just completely melted away. Um, and I'm sorry, uh, keep going. Uh, I've lost my train of thought. No, no. Um, so I would love for you to expand on that. So you were afraid, like most people are afraid of what people will say, if they'll be judged or pressured. And that fear you said just kind of melted away. So can you recall the experiences that you had when you first went out into the world alcohol free? Yeah, absolutely. At first, it, I w it was a very anxious uh, decision to to become alcohol free because my wife and I had had um, good times, but I started to take a pause and think that I am not going to give alcohol the credit for those good times. We had good times because we love each other and we have fun times together. So uh, I started to think of all situations like that. Same with family. I would get together with my brothers we, and I think of all the times we'd had drinks and stuff like that and have a great time. But really I was having a great time because of people and because of connection. So 
when I took alcohol off the plate, when I made that decision, uh, it, it was a uh, great weight was lifted off my shoulders and it was, it was really nice because the decision I made the decision, uh, decided to stick to it. The, the physical bonus of not drinking alcohol had, hadn't really kicked in yet. I was a little worried uh, going out, uh, what people would think would they judge me because I remember thinking some of those things about people that uh, weren't drinking alcohol, but that's because I was insecure about it. So I started to, to not really care. I, it started with, started with some anxiety and, and I learned some tips and tricks from alcohol free lifestyle about how to get on at a party and, and the, er, the early days with that. And that worked great. And then it turned into um, me not really caring what other people thought and realizing that they don't really care as much, <laughs> that much either um, what I'm drinking. And then it turned into an excitement to go out and connect with people in a way I hadn't connected with people in, in more than a decade. You can just see that sense of self come in and be like, yeah, I'm totally happy now with who I am and I'm, I don't have to pretend I don't have to be something I'm not. And the wonderful realization that we have, which is actually people are too busy worrying about what you think about them than actually worrying about but you. Like people don't care. People really aren't that interested. It's quite freeing, isn't it? It is. It's nice. <laughs> That's amazing. So you've basically gone from, I can never quit and I'm, you know, I'm weak and willed and all those things that we tell ourselves to um, moving past all of the common obstacles, like the normalizing of it in society, the fear of guilt, uh, the fear of judgment and the fear of not being able to be fun and social. What else? came up for you over the course of the 90 days? Yeah. Everything that I wanted out of it came up for me, which I'm, I'm happy to say. Um, my life got better in ways I was hoping for and ways that I didn't even expect. So I do a lot of uh, running, for instance, and I track biometrics and things like that my my sleep got really good and really regular um i used to hate sundays and i know a lot of people in the healthcare field don't like sundays because you're worried about monday you had fun on friday you had fun on saturday and then sunday which should be sunday fun day was sunday anxiety day because now you know you can't you can't have your, your drug of choice, your alcohol, you have to get ready. You got that work week coming up, you, you know, and it was that melted away. I didn't have that anymore, which in and of itself was totally worth it. Um, so just, just health things, uh, got so much better. I had energy, my relationship, which I thought always thought was great with my kids got better. My kids started noticing and commenting to me. Um, <laughs> my, my five-year-old, he's like a little sage. Um, he, would, he said, um, dad, you haven't yelled at me in a long time. He said that to me the other, not too long ago. And then just the other day, he just, and he looked at me and he's not a, this lovey dovey kid he, he doesn't say a lot of I love you and things but he looked at me and said I'm really glad you're my dad and um yeah th these types of things are just worth it um it was just unbelievable so those are just health things my mind has been more clear because at first I think with alcohol you have that the ups of of drinking a lot and then you have the downs of not drinking and the, the anxiety that goes with that. I noticed when I stopped drinking, uh, it would, felt a little flat at first. The ups and downs weren't, weren't really there. But then as my brain got readapted to 
expressing dopamine for normal things, which is what I was after all along. I wanted, I wanted to react to the normal things in life more. So now I can, I can hug my daughter and get this big dopamine surge. Whereas before I needed a couple of mixed drinks to get that. Um, and even though I still, I loved hugging my daughter before, I just, I swear I get more out of it now. Uh, reading to my children at night, uh, I'm not nodding off, things like that. And also I'm getting up on the weekends early with them. I'm just, I'm just more calm. It's just, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell anything here. It's just really been awesome. Well, I, I can tell you're not trying to sell anything because there's actually nothing to sell I, because yeah. It's free. All the stuff that you're talking about is there for the taking. It's just that we get uh, lured into an addictive substance that promises to give us all those things. And, um, you know, as we wake up, it's like, wow, I actually don't have to pay a corporation that's out to get me hooked on their product loads of money. It's kind yeah. of exciting. I felt like I was really trying, having to try harder and harder as the years went on to try to maintain my life and the quote unquote balance. You know, I just kept telling myself, I have to work harder. I have to run further, you know, play hard, work hard, this whole thing. And it was untenable and it was stressful. And I found that I just had to stop trying so much. It was actually a lot easier than I thought. And it's just a lot easier now. Now I, I just feel much more settled and, uh, and I wish it on everybody. So it's, yeah. it's, it's really nice. Yeah, I can tell and I can see it. It's, um, it's particularly, I think, for those where it is literally that one thing and it's when you, it's almost like I see people like these helium balloons and they're just being held down. And then when you take that alcohol out, they just rise and it's an extraordinary freedom, I think is the word I put to it. Yeah, it's almost like it's unreal every day. And mm -hmm. when I still feel a little tinge of gratitude every day that I wake up and I feel good and I got a good night's sleep and I don't have any regrets from the day before and I used to have regrets all the time and I now I'm now I'm just don't have regrets every day and it's uh it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing and and to hear your son say <laughs> I'm so glad you're my dad like that's that's huge yeah it's huge so we've talked about um the decision we've talked about just to highlight the fact that there was no kind of uh, stereotypical rock bottom moment but just this disease with how you were living your life you made a decision you took action you got educated you started to see some very tangible benefits, mental health, relationships with your kids. Um, tell me any other areas that you've started to see, I mean, your fitness you've talked about, where else have you seen improvements, your marriage, your career? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that I am a better listener with my wife, try to be more calm, but also now I have more space, more time, to, to read, for instance. Uh, on the weekends, I didn't read much because obvious reasons. I couldn't read while I was drinking. Um, so I have those. Uh, work is just much more enjoyable. It, work is kind of what it is. Uh, but when you take the stress out of it, I think you just do much better and and you feel like you can care for people for that reason to care for them and not just to get through the day not just to get done with that appointment but 
just to slow down and connect with people. And it's something that I hadn't really experienced very, very much in depth. And that's hugely rewarding because before there's always that, well, there was always that for me that did I make the right decision? Was this the right career? I don't know. It's so stressful. And that has changed dramatically in the last hundred days or so to, yeah, this is great. I get to help people. It's wonderful. It's, the stress has gone way down, which 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 is necessary for a lot of people. And there are a lot of healthcare um, people in the alcohol-free lifestyle. I think for for a good reason, and I think it's a good way to have uh, your career be reborn. Um, yeah, I. I would run races before in the past years and, and drink the night before I'd be dehydrated and it would, it would be rough on myself, but I had this mentality of uh, you just, you're going to finish no matter what, you know, no matter what you're, how you feel. And, you know, that's not a good way to, to have a hobby or, you know, <laughs> just doesn't make any sense. And now I just do it because I like to do it. And, you know, not so much stress. I just feel good about it. I do it because I want to do it and it, and it feels good. You know, I, I like to run. Um, yeah, marriage. Yeah. Every, if you take stress out of a situation, it just gets better. <laughs> Bottom line, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, you take the stress or out of the situation and the stress is the booze. Yeah. Slowly, slowly things improve on every level it was amazing how much stress uh alcohol put into uh life and i felt for a long time and i'm sure a lot of people do that it's what you do to de-stress yeah and it's that momentary de-stress but it's a it's a i call it a cheap but very expensive dopamine hit it's it's cheap because it's quick it's you don't work for it but it's expensive in the long run because it's going to screw up the way you get your dopamine naturally. So, uh, you know, it's, I'd say beware of, of, in, of any dopamine that you don't have to work for somewhat. So that's, that's been my experience. Yeah. I think that's, that's awesome that you've just said that I again need to highlight for the listeners that, you know, this, just be careful of, of if it seems too good to be true, it usually is. <laughs> but at the same time, it's that you've, you've also talked about the appreciation of the natural dopamine high, if you like, from cuddling your children. And it's not your dopamine. There's lots of other neurotransmitters, but dopamine's the one that we kind of latch on to in this process that but as we become more healed psychologically and physically hugging our dog or our kids or like you say connecting with a patient at a deeper level provides all of these extraordinary neurotransmitters that are actually there for reasons that we can enjoy our lives mm -hmm. Yeah, life, life has become more rich because I'm yes. connecting with those moments more now. And alcohol, yes. chronic alcohol use would numb those moments out. Yes, uh, that's it. That's what, sorry, that was what I wanted to highlight that you said was that it used to, at the beginning, it's kind of dull, right? Because you're taking away the big hit. Yeah. But you've described in just 116 days, 116, did you say? 133. I mean, who's counting? 133. Oh, there we go. 133 days. It's gone from that to of what you said, which I love, is I'm giving credit to life now, not to alcohol, for those feelings. It's amazing. Yeah. Feels good, and it keeps getting better. For a while, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Somebody used that term. I love that term. I was waiting for the other shoe to drop waiting for things to kind of turn around or, but those fears just start to slowly melt away. And there 
is no other shoe to drop. It's just, this is life and it's just a lot easier this way. And it's a lot more enjoyable this way. And before I didn't, didn't see through to the other side. I didn't think that that was the case. I thought, well, everybody drinks to have fun. You know, my family did on vacations and things and we get together and that's what you do. How could I ever give that up? We have, we had great times, but for one thing, everybody's different. And two, we had great times being together and the times are even getting better and better now where, whereas before you could only get so good and then things got sloppy and, and then you'd have regrets the next day. So now you, you're just, you get all of it and then you get a good night's sleep and you get to wake up. It's, it's, it's everything I could have uh, wished for. It really is. And I'm just really grateful every day. I really am. It's wonderful. It's so wonderful to hear, Ben. Um, so I would like to ask you something. I wrote it down here, which was um, you used to hate Sundays. And you said, um, had that Sunday anxiety day. Tell me what a Sunday's like now for you. Oh, Sundays, yeah. I make pancakes on Sunday mornings and that's a big thing right now. Chocolate chip pancakes. It's a big deal. And I love it. And I <laughs> love it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Details. I mean, you know, coffee, um, love a good cup of coffee in the morning. I love making breakfast for the kids. It's really enjoyable. I have a wood stove right here that, uh, I like to get a little fire going. Um, you know, go outside in the mornings. Now it's starting to get warm here and let the chickens out. And, oh uh, gosh, it's just good. These little things are, are really enjoyable. And it's just a, uh, I don't want to say it's just another day, but it is, it's a, it's another full weekend day that I can enjoy because I'm not cursing that I, that I can't use, you know, that I can't drink, you know? On Saturday, you wake up. I'm like, all right, it's Saturday. Yay. You know why? It's, I'm glad it's because I got Saturday night to look forward to, you know. But now it's just, and then Sunday, I'm like, oh, you know, I, Sunday sucks because, uh, you know, I can't drink tonight. And then tomorrow it's going to be stressful. But now I don't have that. It's just, a, it's another weekend day. It's the full day. I do everything I did on Saturday now, you know. <laughs> And I uh, have the same type of night that I had on Saturday and it was, it was awesome and everything's good, <laughs> you know? So it's like, I got a weekend day out of it, you know? A whole day, right? Yeah. Yeah. A whole, day. whole extra day. <laughs> well, and my stress and anxiety previously on Sundays would um, manifest, you know, I, I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't very cool with the kids or, half the time I would sleep in, you know, my, 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 my wife and I would alternate, you know, and I might sleep till 10 or something crazy like that. Who does that with three little kids? And then, you know, it feels like half the day's gone. So it's just a lot more life. It's a lot more time. Um, and just such a better way of spending time. I mean, magnitude's better way of spending my life. And, you know, we've talked about what's going to matter when you're on your deathbed. And I think it's a healthy thing and a good thing to think about that, to think about your own death, not in a macabre sense, but, you know, to look back at what you've accomplished and what you've done. And I think relationships are going to be essentially the main thing. What kind of life you've led, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do. I don't think, you know, it matters how you do it. So. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And I'm certain that your young man will be saying that he's happy you were his dad up until that day. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Amazing. Yeah. It's good stuff. 
It's good stuff. So then, um, before we finish up, Bob, just one last question, and you may not have anything else to say, but would you, if you do, do you have anything else you'd like to share with the listeners before we finish today? Um, yeah, I think it was, I, I, was, I was thinking of uh, back to when I felt really trapped. I felt trapped because I thought stopping drinking or getting help with that was too much of a, a step and I was feeling trapped and I just hope that people will at least start listening to some some of your podcasts um, maybe check this program out I'm sure there's other great programs out there too um, just find the one that's uh, that works the best for you I again like I said before I really like the science behind it and that's what's really helped me a lot, but I couldn't be more grateful for, for just looking into it. It was a bit of a leap of faith for me, um, but gosh, I, I just, I keep using the word grateful. That has a big part of, of in this program, but I'm just uh, utterly grateful that I started listening to those pro to the podcasts and um, took that leap. I think anybody can uh, take some time off of alcohol, but for me, it, it started with that feeling of, I need to take some time off of alcohol to alcohol just doesn't work for me. And realizing that that's okay, because it some people can drink occasionally and that's fine. Uh, some people are, neurotransmitters maybe just get a little too excited and I think people are just built differently and and just to realize that it's okay and um, this program helped me to uh, realize how that works and it also helped me to um, get excited about uh, living life alcohol free and not that oh geez I gotta I gotta stop or anything like that it changed for me to I gotta stop to I get to stop and I get to live this life uh, alcohol free and it's wonderful and it's it's actually very exciting and I'm excited every day to uh, to live like this and I'm not quote unquote sober and I don't have a quote unquote disease I'm just a normal human being who drinks normal human being things and uh, yeah I'm just trying to live life and uh, keep my body running as well as I can and it's really awesome. Well, Ben, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. And I think that now you're going to be part of the podcasts that the next person might listen to and have their journey start in the same way that you did. So I want to thank you for giving us your time, your wisdom and the passion that I can hear in your voice and excitement about your future, not just for yourself, but for your family and it's wonderful to see and I know that you worked really, really hard for this. So I want to acknowledge you and I want to thank you for being so generous with your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Ben. Oh, thank you, Sarah. It's I'm very grateful for alcohol free lifestyle and, and um, thank, thanks so much for asking me. Hmm. Of course. Well, thank you so much for listening. I hope that you found something in Ben's story today that at least sparked some curiosity or maybe some hope um, that there is something so much more beautiful on the other side of alcohol. Thanks for listening. This is Sarah Connolly and I'll see you again soon.